It's a little bit after seven, so I'll call to order the committee of the whole meeting, and I will start with asking for a roll call. Boring. Here. Berg. Here. Serta present. Davis. Here. Groff. Excuse. Hannah. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clayunas. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Ryan. Here. Susha. Excuse. Vanderwill. Here. Verhassel. Excuse. Thirteen present. We have a quorum, so I will begin with asking for a presentation regarding the USS Edson. Thank you very much and good evening to everybody here. We did, as we put together a real quick presentation different than our first one that kind of addresses some of the issues that have been brought up. Just the first couple slides to rehash kind of our project. It's a way to bring more visitors and dollars into Sheboygan. Historic naval and military education is one of our missions. Dockside cruises involves having youth groups come on board the ship and be able to spend the night. A veterans Memorial. Military reunions are a very big part of these historic naval ships and a place to hold gatherings and social functions. A little bit about the USS Edson. She is a national historic place built in 1959 and served until 1988. And this is um, one thing that I really would like to emphasize is that a lot of people have referred to this ship as a World War II ship. And I don't want to mislead anybody. This ship was built after World War II. However, it is named after a World War II hero. So that could be where the misconception was with that. It was named after Major General Merritt Edson, a Medal of Honor winner. Three tours of duty in Vietnam, providing close-in gun support. Featured in an episode of The Twilight Zone and was on display in New York at the USS Intrepid Museum from 1989 to 2004. And one of the interesting facts about when it was there is and during the 9-11 attacks, it served as a recovery post for firefighters, which is also part of our mission statement. The first issue that we'll address is parking. Possible solutions or also things that are, are important to talk about is one of the conditions in the conditional uh, lease is that we complete a successful parking study. So this is something that if it is not successful, either the city and, and us have to sit down or it becomes a big hurdle. We also will be paying a parking assessment to comply with the parking district, so we're not trying to shy away from that. One of the ideas that, that has surfaced from some people is that to use the water taxi. There are four current pick-off and drop-off points. This could be expanded to include also the ship. Street parking further west on South Pier Drive, utilizing a shuttle. We can always pick up a shuttle very similar to like the Milwaukee County Zoo Mobile and be able to get tourists back and forth between the ship and where they're parked. And remote parking, utilizing the transit services of the city. Sight lines. Here is a current overhead view of Sheboygan Harbor and where we would like to put the USS Edson. The sight lines are both from the east end of Blue Harbor and from the Sheboygan Yacht Club. What we have done is we have taken pictures and be able to drop the ship into the, to the spot to be able to show you what the ship would look like. The way this was done is there were two people standing on the pier 418 feet apart with flags. We took a picture of that and then was able to drop the ship in there which is to scale. So this is from the east end of Blue Harbor. and then from the Sheboygan Yacht Club. One of the hard things in doing these type of pictures is being able to recreate the notch as realistically as possible. Overall size. This picture shows you a cross section of the Edson and also gives you an idea of the different decks. For instance, the main deck is the main line that goes on the, towards the top of the ship. So this line right here is the main deck. The first level up is the 01 level, and then they go 02 and 03. The reason we want to tell you this is because the overall length of the Edson is 418 feet. The 01 deck goes 238 feet, so just over half of the ship. At the stern, or the back end of the ship, the ship will only be 4.2 feet above the seawall. The bow, being a hurricane bow, will be 19 feet above the seawall, but this is because the deck, as you can see, goes up. The tallest significant part of the ship is the stacks. You can see them both on this picture right here. 
the top of that stack is for, uh, 44.2 feet above the seawall. I'm sorry, 44.6 feet above the seawall. The height of the O1 deck, which is the first deck above main deck, is 12.6 feet. So this gives you some idea of how, if you're standing on the south pier, where the tops of these will be. Local support. Here is a list of businesses that we have gone to and have supported the USS Ed Edson project. One of the most important ones here, because it's always been brought up, is the developer of where the green warehouse was going to be supportive of the project, considering the proximity of that condos to where the Edson would be. And you will notice the first name on there, Paul Wisey Real Estate. He is very much in support of the project. In fact, when we met with him, he joked that he kind of wished the ship was closer to the condos because he thought it would be a selling point. Other support, the Sheboygan Press had a poll for us, which we won 58 to 42 percent. There's been over 4,000 cards of support that have been signed pretty much in the last six months is when we started doing that um, campaign as far as getting the support card signed. And forums on local website have showed much support for the USS Edson. In fact, just a couple of real quick quotes from some of the people that have posted. Uh, Edson is a gift that will cost the city nothing. Why can't the council approve the concept, allow the group to move forward with their needed studies, and see how that works out? We're not allowing the group to show us the benefits. Fundraising. A professional fundraising company has already been talked to and will be contracted to run the major capital campaign. This will not center in Sheboygan. Of course, we would like to see some support financially in the city, but that is not where we plan on getting the bulk of our money from. This is going to be a state and nationwide endeavor. To put it in perspective, this oversimplifies it, but you get an idea. In Wisconsin, there are approximately 500,000 veterans. If each veteran gave $10, you're looking at $5 million. Now, once again, that oversimplifies it, but you get an idea of where this money can come from. There's also going to be donations and partnerships with major corporations, people and uh, companies that have built things that are on the ship, that becomes a natural way to be able to raise money. Grants from federal agencies, state agencies, there are a lot of monies out there available for economic redevelopment. In fact, the USS Saratoga Museum in Rhode Island recently received a grant from the federal government to redo the pier where the, the Saratoga will be moored. Plan giving and estate planning will provide for future repair of the ship if needed, and also allow us to set up the USS Edson Scholarship Endowment Fund. We believe that we should be able to give back to the community that is going to support us. Emergency access. What has or can be done, or groups that we can talk to to get their assistance, obviously the Sheboygan Fire Department and the Coast Guard. Both of them will have big inputs into how we can do this. The Edson has been a museum and has been upgraded for fire detection. In a tour where I was on her in June, you could see there were all kinds of up, uh, upgrades as far as smoke detectors and things like that that will help with that. All fuel oil will be removed. That is a Navy regulation. We cannot have fuel oil on board. And then redesigning of the South Pier to allow access for vehicles. This will be done with the input of the Sheboygan Fire Department. Oh, that is true. Thank you very much. There is, a, there is going to be a supply of fresh water aboard the USS Edson for our overnights, and then the fire mains on the ship can be activated for that as well. So that is our presentation tonight of the issues that have been brought up since we talked to you last. So now, if you have any questions during your discussion, please feel free to ask myself. I'm Chad Source, the museum director, and this is Nor Bybee, who is our plans and training officer. He has unique insight into these type of vessels because his sister ship or he was on the sister ship, which was the USS Morton, so he kind of has a, a working knowledge of these type of vessels. Thank you. Questions from the Alderman, Alderman Hanna? Yes, thank you very much. Are our mics on tonight? Yeah, mics are on. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, where is the USS Edson now? Where is it currently? It is in Philadelphia at the Naval Inactive Ships okay. area. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was just um, 
wondering how much money do you need to bring it here and how much have you raised so far? The total project cost will be between eight and $10 million. Now this includes all of the money to actually physically bring the ship here, to moor the ship here, to have the dredging and the pier redesigned, to have operating expenses for five years, and to have money set aside in case the ship fails. So we have to have a return bond. So that money is all inclusive into that. So that's the total project cost from start to finish. Now as far as what we have raised so far, do you have a, a total on that? <coughs> We have not we have not been able to raise uh, significant money because people aren't willing to give unless they know there's a place to put the ship. Uh, in the uh, per, <clears throat> I think most of you know we had originally started uh, trying to bring a ship to uh, Milwaukee, and uh, with the money left over from that project, uh, we are applying that to this one. And I believe we currently have about $20,000 in the bank, and we have uh, raised uh, well over 100000 uh for the preliminary work in, in both ships. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Montemara? Oh, thank you, Chairman Verhassel. Um, who has the authority over the ship presently? Are you asking who owns the ship? Yes. The United States Navy currently owns the ship and will own the ship even when it is on display at any city. All of currently, I shouldn't say all, the majority of the vessels that are on display as historic naval vessels right now are still the property of the United States Navy. We are simply the caretakers. And, and, that, and it will remain, the, the Navy owns it. Absolutely, and, and one, of the, one of the things that the Navy does is they will periodically come and visit the USS Edson or any of the other ships, if they feel it is not being up, uh, kept up to their standards, either we have to take care of that or then the ship gets towed away at our expense. Okay, one more about this. Um, because the Navy owns it and will continue to own it, which makes perfect sense, right? Um, who then has the financial responsibility of maintaining it? The Wisconsin Naval Ship Association, so us. The association, not yes. the Navy. No. WINSA. Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Montemara. Alderman Hanna. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. There was uh, quite a bit of news on the radio today uh, from the Corps of Engineers about our South Pier, uh, stating that the project had been, uh, there's no argument that the pier needs to be rebuilt. Uh, but apparently the, the Corps has pushed that project line back on that. Uh, comment on the timing, uh, let's say you receive approval or the go-ahead from this council, uh, what is the timing of all this coming together? If everything works out to plan, which we live in a real world so that never really works that way, the soonest we could have this ship here would be late summer or early, early fall of 2008. Now chances are this is going to be at least a two-year project. The application process through the Navy is extremely complex. Not only do we have to have money secured, but we have to have a museum plan, a towing plan. Um, we have to present all of this to the United States Navy. This isn't something that's going to happen overnight by any means. Uh, I'm, <clears throat> I might mention also that uh, uh, we understand the problems with the pier. And one of the reasons we've got a, uh, not real sure what the total project is going to cost is if necessary, we will try to pay for uh, repair and upgrading of that pier uh, up through the point where the uh, Edson uh, will be moored. We are also intending to try to get some uh, push from uh, our uh, federal politicians to uh, get money appropriated to uh, get that pier repaired at an earlier date. But if we can't get it done through the government, we'll try to pay for that ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Davis. Thank you, Chairman Vanderwood. I have several questions for you. Uh, how many members does Lindsay have? How many people are involved in your organization? 50? At, 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 this, at this stage of the game, I think we probably have about 40 members, yeah. Uh, you say it's in a museum configuration at this time. Do you have rooms, meeting rooms, uh, et cetera, areas that have been cleared for uh, meetings and social 
Yes. Gathering? Yes. Uh, is it functional now? What's functional on the ship now? Electricity. Well, <laughs> Chad, Chad was there this summer. Um, the ship has power, so the electricity all works on the ship. Um, if needed be, I'm sure that they could work on the engines to be able to make those work, but the Navy really isn't fond of doing that. Um, uh, the uh, um, restroom capabilities, those are all up to current standards. Um, the galley works, um, because during a lot of times for the war crews that would come on and do the maintenance, the old director of the Edson would actually just cook for the, the men that were on there right in the galley, so that is currently operating as well. Um, uh, and even as far as the forward five inch mount can still fire blanks if need to. So there's, there's quite a bit of the ship that is, is already, I mean, uh, let's put it this way. When I, took, when I went through the ship in June, there wasn't any part that was closed. Okay. Uh, one other thing, I know you have a very aggressive schedule on your estimate of uh, people that would be touring this, you know, and it even and it surpasses the, the museum in Manitowoc. And it, it, I tend to question there was numbers there on, on your... The, the your way estimate. we came up with those numbers, if you look at the Manitowoc MSA, which is a marketing segment area, versus the Sheboygan one, Sheboygan is a lot bigger. We are also closer to the Milwaukee market, which will lend a little bit of help as far as getting people into the ship. Now, that being said, we could be overestimating our numbers. These are our preliminary numbers that one of our studies will be, the feasibility study that we want to do once the lease has been approved will start to show where numbers will be more accurately. Thank you. Uh, one of the uh, things that uh, we will have that they do not have in Manitowoc is uh, uh, destroyer reunions. Uh, the uh, number of destroyers uh, and the people that served on them uh, much surpasses uh, that of submarines. And these people like to have their reunions at uh, destroyer sites. It's, uh, it's a very popular thing. Uh, most these ships have reunions every other year. And I think that we will get a significant increase of uh, tourists from these uh, uh, destroyer reunions. Thank you, Alderman Recchi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I got a couple of different questions. You mentioned Milwaukee. What happened? Why did Milwaukee say no? Well, now, one thing that has to be understood is Milwaukee was a completely different vessel. And that was the USS Des Moines, which was a heavy cruiser. And that's what you started with here, but you started with it there. Correct. And that was the original concept. Right. What happened? Why did Milwaukee not want it? You came up to Sheboygan. That's the first question. Okay, first, the USS Des Moines was sitting decommissioned for 40 years. Uh, the amount of work and money that would have gone into that project probably surpassed $30 million. The area that we were looking at on the lake is a very hotly contested area that they would like kept empty. Okay. The, I think the cruel truth of it is we had uh, cards of support for that project in excess of, what, 50,000 cards of support for the project. There were a handful of uh, people in the Milwaukee area, uh, movers and shakers, who for one reason or another did not want the ship there. Uh, also, the uh, Sierra Club and the Parks people uh, were uh, vehemently against the project. And it was due to that relatively small number of people, but very influential, that uh, we didn't get to first base there. Okay, then next question, you're talking about the seawall and the Army Corps of Engineers pushing that back a few years. What would be wrong with looking at going up the river, say up to the first bend and moving it up there where it would be more accessible to the street, more accessible for parking, uh, say, in the northwest corner by the first bend in the river, or just before the Rotary Riverview Park. What would be wrong with going there? You're talking about you're willing to pay for the reconstruction of the South Pier if you would need to, yet there's dredging costs to get it up the river a little bit further. I mean, what would be the, the trade-off to something like that? I mean, you're going to also have to worry about the environmental contamination with the PCB sediments that have... Uh, been a problem in this river for the past 30 some odd years, um, and that's going to be a problem either way. Uh, 
We had originally looked at having the ship uh, further upriver, uh, and uh, I think that uh, we could certainly take a look at that again, but when we were talking to uh, some of the city departments, uh, that did not seem to be an option. There will be uh, uh, dredging costs involved in that, and there may be uh, uh, possible problems with the uh, Corps of Engineers uh, uh, because of the width of the ship uh, blocking passage there. Uh, I would say that we could look at that again. We, I don't think we, we have it in stone that the ship has to be right exactly where we put it, but everything that we've done so far seems to suggest that that is the only and best spot for it. Uh, if somebody can show us upriver is better, that would be fine. As far as uh, PCB contamination, we've talked with the uh, DNR people uh, as well as the Corps engineers. In the area <coughs> where we're currently uh, putting the ship, uh, it is suspected that there is uh, no serious contamination there because the ship had, or the harbor had been dredged, I believe it was in the late 80s, if I remember right, and a lot of the PCBs uh, were removed then, and most of the uh, sand uh, that's there now has been washed over from the south side of the pier, uh, a problem that should be reduced when the pier is rebuilt because we're going to be uh, building it at a higher uh, um, higher above uh, lake level to help prevent uh, that sand. It was the Corps engineers that came up with this idea of putting the ship there uh, with that slot. And uh, I don't know if that answers your question. Somewhat. That's it for now. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Alderman Recchi. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I was wondering if you could explain to the council, uh, Captain Dick Caswell has been kind of the spearhead of this project and he's not here this evening for an obvious reason that uh, I was wondering if you could explain to the council uh, Captain Caswell's um, position in this whole thing. And, our uh, organizational president, Captain Dick Caswell, was working on his house and when he was coming down off of his ladder, the ladder decided to fall off the house. So he, uh, he took a nasty spill and is currently at Freighter Hospital recovering from several broken, broken bones, in, including part of a hip. Uh, scapula and ribs. He is recovering very well and is in extremely good spirits and I am sure that had he have figured a way to sneak out of the hospital he would have been up here right now. Well we hope he recovers. Is there anything else on the uh, one, one more question if you could explain to the council um, Captain Caswell's position uh, relationship with the Department of the Navy. There are some uh, questions out there as far as Sheboygan uh, being able to obtain this ship. Uh, uh, Windsor being able to obtain this ship uh, as opposed to our competition over in Sarah. I spoke with the Navy this morning and uh, the ship's donation office thinks very highly of, of Captain Caswell. Um, he keeps them informed of every little move that we make and, and they're very appreciative of that because they can see progress or where we're having any stumbling blocks. So, But um, for those of you who may not know, Captain Caswell was a CB in the Navy with, with 27 years in the Navy, six of them being active and the rest of them on reserves. So he definitely put his time in with the United States Navy. So but is very highly thought of at the, at the Navy Department of uh, the Ship's Donation Office. Thank you. Uh, President Berg? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, obviously, there's competition for this vessel, and uh, I guess if you could just address the process uh, where you would be at. In other words, are you, uh, are you playing a catch-up game with the competition and the impact uh, of that, and to some degree, the urgency you feel for this council to uh, adopt and approve the lease agreement. That was really the primary reason that I called the Navy Department this morning, and this is exactly what she told me, that Saginaw right now is in no better shape than we are. They are one half step ahead of us in as far as having the lease. That is it. They do not have their money raised. They do not have any other plans in place as far as their museum plan or their towing plan. 
They have been spreading a lot of misinformation out there about as far as where they are in the project, but this came directly from the ship's donation office in Washington with the United States Navy. Uh, for those of you that don't, aren't real familiar with the, the process, uh, a application is due to the ship's donation office. Uh, this application is very extensive. I think uh, probably a bunch of papers that thick. It has uh, uh, towing plans, museum plans, uh, uh, a business plan. It's very extensive. Once the Navy accepts an application, and that doesn't mean have it in hand, that means uh, goes over it and feels that it is a complete application, a six-month period starts. Anybody else who's interested in that ship has six months to get their application in. At the end of that time, the Navy will go through every application that they've received on the ship and make a decision which one they recommend uh, to keep the ship. Uh, that recommendation goes to Congress where uh, the final steps are taken to authorize the ship going to a specific location. So <clears throat> we would like to be the first to have our application in. Saginaw has had application in previously and it has not been acceptable. Uh, so, but uh, we would rather have ours in first than have to have to uh, try to play catch up in that six month period. Uh, part of this application is uh, getting <coughs> uh, uh, money or pledges for money uh, and that can take a little bit of time when you're talking about the dollars we're talking about. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I wonder if you could tell me uh, First of all, generally, what, is, what are the admiss admission charges for the public for the ship in other markets? What, you get a ballpark figure, what it would be here. And then number two, uh, after you've been up and running for let's say two years, uh, what type of gross revenues do you think you would enjoy? And then also, what do you think your net revenues would be, just ballpark, uh, just to give you an, and, and then thirdly, your gross revenues, does that go into a reserve fund in your organization and does that reserve fund stay here in Sheboygan or that can that be used in other communities? If the first part as far as museum admissions, it, de it, it largely depends on the size of the ship. Other destroyers are anywhere between 8 and $12. You can go to see some of the battleships like the Battleship New Jersey, which can be between 16 and $20. Um, our prices are going to be more in the $8, $10 range depending on the type of tour you want, if you want a self-tour or a guided tour. Um, now as far as gross revenues... <laughs> We're working on a business plan, and I don't have those figures. Uh, Could you hand him the mic, in, please? In mind. Oh, oh. Sorry. I, we're working on a business plan, uh, and uh, we do not have, or I do not have, uh, our projected figures uh, in mind right now. Uh, but we are sh very confident that at a uh, a uh, number of 60,000 visitors that we will have enough money to uh, pay for staff, keep the ship maintained. Uh, so I think, and, and probably less than that. But uh, as we fine tune our business plan and the, the company that we are having uh, uh, do our fundraising will first be doing a feasibility study. And this is a professional company that's been in business a long time. And once we get some figures from them, we'll have a better idea of, of these things. Uh, one of the things I should mention is the uh, Tin Can Sailors Association, which is a very large association of uh, sailors who have been on destroyers, uh, donates uh, yearly, uh, what is it, $20,000. 20, uh, to help per destroyer to help maintain uh, these ships and they currently have some money set aside uh, for this ship that they're holding in escrow uh, as far as any income 
leaving this community. Uh, we don't intend that to happen. Uh, this is a project for this ship, for this city, and uh, it's, it's money's not to go anywhere else. That, that's it. Uh, if we have enough funds, we'd mentioned the scholarship fund that we would like to have, so that might be some money that goes out of state to a, a university, but it would be to a student, and we have not defined exactly what that's going to be, but it may be for uh, city residents, for county residents, or for uh, uh, tin can sailors, kids. Who, those details are to be worked out. Thank you, Alderman Montemer. Um, thank you, Chairman Vanderweel. Uh, let me know if I have this correct. The Navy will always own the ship. Correct. WINSA will always be in charge of the maintenance and the safety, and WINSA will also either hire or actually themselves run the tourist ship. Absolutely. Okay. Now, so being a property of the Navy, it's nonprofit. Of course, it's a ship also. Very close look are supported by the state. These are usually the battleships that are named after the state. The USS North Carolina gets quite a bit money appropriated from the state to help with uh, maintenance and also um, capital upgrades to the vessel. But our initial numbers and our initial budget show that we can be self-sufficient. Oh, and also have the return fund set aside. That money is just, that's got to be there and not touched. To return the ship to somewhere else if it doesn't work here. Correct. That, okay. Correct. And, and you've got some sort of an idea how much that might cost in, well, you, in five years, ten years, it's between, 40 years? It's between, it's the, the bond would be between one and a half and two million dollars. Okay, which the, would take care of it now, but, well, in Oh, no, that would, right, yeah, that would just sit in escrow okay. so it would collect interest. It, we Thank can't you. touch it, right. All right. So it's kind of right now. Minsa versus Winza. Well, I, I see where you're going with that. Yeah, they're, 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 I think their official name is the Saginaw Valley oh, okay. Historic Naval Ship. Okay. It, it's something. Not Michigan sort of, Naval. No, okay. no, right. no. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I guess Marilyn uh, Alderman Montemayor uh, answered or got some of those questions out that I wanted to ask. Also, it's a different group competing. It's it is a completely separate organization. Separate correct. Group. So, and then I'm going back to, to why us. And then the comment I had was, can you t talk about the proposed Naval Heritage Trail? Is that oh, absolutely. Very, is that one of the reasons why you would like it here in Chicago? Well, it, the, the Naval Heritage Trail, for those of you who aren't familiar with this, is something that has been proposed and something that can really take off depending on how it, it works. Um, very similar to a lot of the lighthouse trails that go throughout Wisconsin, Michigan, um, and even Indiana and Ohio, we can do the same thing with naval ships starting down. Actually, you can even go to Michigan and Mississippi Keegan with the USS Silversides, come down to Chicago for the U505 at the Museum of Science and Industry. The city of Waukegan, Illinois is attempting to get a destroyer of her own, the USS Connolly, which is a much more modern ship than ours. Um, then you have us with the USS Edson here in Sheboygan and ending at Manitowoc with the USS Cobia. So it's something that, that very easily could be picked up as a, a, a tour group or that people take for a week-long tour and just tour these, these ships mm -hmm. because they're very, very popular. Uh, I have talked to so many people that they don't understand the, the realm of the project and then they go to see a ship. Uh, I'm a very avid bowler and last year our nationals were in Corpus Christi, Texas and that is the home port of the USS Lexington. And a lot of my fellow bowlers went down there, knew I was involved in this project, came back and they said, we were on the Lady Lex. You gotta get a ship here. We understand the project completely now. Mm -hmm. So when you take a tour of one of these vessels, you understand the history, everything that goes on with it. So all of a sudden to have a trail that can go between our state, Illinois, Michigan, all over the place, really becomes a popular idea. So that's kind of the basis to the um, Naval Heritage Trail. Mm -hmm. You want to mention the difference between the Connolly and the Edson? Oh, real quickly, yeah, the, the, the Connolly, the USS Connolly is a Spruance class destroyer that was designed in the 1970s. She does have missile batteries, though. She has um, uh, one on the fore, and then I believe she has harpoons on the back. That's not really important to them. But the USS Edson has no missiles. It is a look at older Navy technology. She was the last all-gun destroyer class that was built. 
So you're looking at, at something older, and that is one reason she is on the National Historic um, Place list, because she has not been modified too much. The USS Wisconsin has, and so unfortunately she does not qualify for that status because of all of her renovations in the 1980s. Thank you, Alderman Clahunas. Thank you. Um, a number of my questions were answered as well. Uh, what happens to the Edson if nobody wants it? Eventually, if nobody wants it after a period of a number of years, it will get towed to a scrapper and scrapped. That is the fate of the USS Des Moines, which we tried to get. It was towed to Texas, and it is currently being cut apart systematically. A very sad end to a very proud naval ship. So it will get scrapped if nobody else wants it. Or possibly. Or possibly sunk in a, in a naval exercise. Mm -hmm. So the, the, I guess the people who want this have a love of ships, love of naval ships, and they're looking for a parking place. That, you know, I mean, it's our, our shoreline is a place to park this symbol of history and, and okay. Correct. Yeah, I, I, um, you know, why a ship and that kind of thing. I guess I'm really basic questions on it, so thank you. Uh, that's part of the reason. A big part of the reason is we want to enable uh, our youth to experience what our sailors went through, uh, the kind of uh, life that they have, what it was like aboard ship. Uh, so it's not just that we're looking for a place to park the ship. Uh, the reason I, I got involved in this is because I wanted something that I could bring my grandkids to uh, who live in this area, uh, that uh, other people uh, living in this area could visit a ship. Uh, there's no ship like this anywhere near here. Uh, the East Coast has dozens of museum ships up and down it, as does the West Coast, except for San Francisco. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, I think it is a unique opportunity to, uh, for our youth to uh, see uh, what our sailors uh, have gone through, what kind of uh, living conditions that they had. When we were in Milwaukee, there was one woman that got up and said that she, she had a, a young son who was having trouble in school, getting into trouble in the community. He was a hard kid to handle. He went aboard the Cobia for one of the overnight stays there. He came back and his whole attitude was changed. His grades went up, he stopped getting into trouble. That is the kind of thing that can happen uh, with, with kids on these ships. Uh, when we talk about these overnight stays, we're not just talking about having them come and sleep on the ship and leave the next day. We'll have uh, programs for them, uh, teach them uh, some nautical skills, uh, teach them uh, history, and uh, we'll have a, a, a very extensive uh, education program uh, for these kids, not just the weekend ones. We hope to have uh, seminars uh, or little talks uh, during uh, uh, some, of the, some of the evenings for, for adults, bring some uh, hist military historians in and uh, that, that type of thing. So. Education uh, is a strong part of this. And what they get from being aboard a ship and getting this education is very much different than getting it in a classroom. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you kind of touched on this with the youth groups. Uh, you know, they, I, that's one thing I see as a, as a big advantage to this community with this ship. It's not only bringing tourist dollars in, uh, but it's, you know, locally for, for, you know, the local, for the, for the schools, for the youth groups. Uh, you know, you mentioned the overnight campouts, uh, you know, having overnight outings on the ship. Um, can you even, I know that uh, there's been some conversation uh, uh, between the uh, Rockets for Schools group on this, on this ship. Can you touch on that a little bit and the possibilities there? 
Well, I know that we talked, and, and there's a couple representatives from the organization here, so hopefully later if, if they have any input, they can give it as well, but we definitely want to work with them. We think that there's a, a very distinct um, amount of things that we can do together as far as having the ship be used during their launches, having the kids be able to stay on board the ship on Friday night before they go into their launches. There's a lot of ideas that we can that we can partner together and we've been working on a, a memorandum of understanding and I just got the first draft from them back from our draft so uh, definitely is an organization that has been very open to us and, and very supportive as far as, you know, we, we sat down, identified their needs and, and figured out where we can help them out and they can help us out. So I'm very, very glad to work with them. Um, basically what you're looking here from this council um, is the blessing of the city to say, yes, go ahead and let's, let's explore this project if you can make this project happen uh, with your business plan, your feasibility study, everything has to fall into place. But in order to do that, you need the approval of this council to get the ball rolling, correct? Correct. What we're looking for is the, the conditional lease from the city. What this is going to allow us to do is to begin our studies. And these are your feasibility studies, environmental studies, um, parking studies, any sort of contingency that the city has set up or the Navy sets up. Now, at any time, if one of those contingencies, if one of those studies comes back negatively, then we either have to sit down with the city and ourselves, figure out how to solve it, or there's where the city has an out, that they can terminate the process if they want. So this is something that this lease that is before you right now is not the final lease. This just allows us to be able to start our work. Because, that, like, just for example, the environmental studies is $98,000. Our organization really does not feel like paying for that to come back to the council for them to say, thank you, but we're not interested now. Because then that is just a, a, a waste of time and money for our organization and for your city. So that is kind of what we're looking for with this lease, is to allow us to start our fundraising process, to allow us to start our studies. It's a chicken and egg thing. Somebody's got to get it started. Thank you, Alderman Recchi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm taking a look here at some of the museum ships around the country. We have the, uh, the COD, which is uh, in Cleveland, Ohio. That seems to be a submarine. We have Correct. the Silver Sides in Muskegon, Michigan, another submarine. We've got the Kobe in Manitowoc, which is another submarine. How many of these types of vessels, a destroyer such as this, are docked in the Great Lakes and have to put up with the weather conditions, especially in the winter months with the icing, that <clears throat> the, the submarines are basically, did not have the superstructure above the water, such as this type of a vessel. How is this going to weather out? I mean, how many other communities in this far north have this type of vessel sitting in their community in fresh water like we are? Buffalo has the USS Little Rock, which is a guided missile cruiser, and Albany, New York, has the USS Slater, which is a destroyer escort. Um, both of those operations are uh, very, very um, well received, especially in Buffalo. When um, the Little Rock was decommissioned, uh, uh, Buffalo jumped at the opportunity to be able to save that ship. Um, and the USS Slater was one of the first destroyer escorts to open in the United States, and they were very uh, warmly received there as well. As far as the maintenance and upkeep, as far as I've been in, in contact with their executive directors, they have had no other um, significant problems than some of the other ones in uh, more of a, a temperate climate, such as the, the Gulf Coast, because they have to deal with the humidity all the time that we don't. Um, in talking with the USS North Carolina, their executive director was a former commanding officer of this vessel, the USS Edson, and uh, we went over plans with how to properly weather and condition the deck and the superstructure to be able to last more than three, four, five years before it has to be repainted. So it's something that, obviously these vessels served all over the world. It's not like they just served where it was warm. They served in the North Atlantic. They served uh, off the coast of Korea in the winter, and, and they didn't have any sort of maintenance or, or general upkeep problems then. But when you're moving a vessel, it's a whole different story than letting a vessel sit there to take on these types of conditions, where they can be rocked in that berth and, and take on the, the seas that they take. The other side is, I mean, you're talking about youths and everything else. You're talking about the history of the Navy. I haven't heard one word about the history of Sheboygan's Naval Force. I haven't heard anything about the Great Lakes themselves. I have not heard anything about what you're going to do to show Sheboygan's ship history. 
There's a lot of wrecks laying out here that myself and a lot of other people are interested in reading about. As a matter of fact, there's so many wrecks, it's hard to even keep track of them, trying to read them. What are you going to do to, to, to bring that into the, into the picture as well? I mean, you're bringing a United States Navy ship in here is what you want to do. You want to immortalize the United States Navy in a city that really would never see a destroyer otherwise. So what are you going to do to help us you know, show the history of the naval, or I should say the shipbuilding history way back into the 1800s, the shipwrecks in Lake Michigan? That's of greater importance to me than seeing the United States Navy destroyer here in our harbor. And that is exactly what we want to showcase. You are absolutely right. Sheboygan has a very proud naval heritage. Um, from the USS Eli, which was the last ship, um, back through the lap wing, there were a lot of Corn Belt fleet ships that served right here. There was a USS Sheboygan, a patrol frigate. That, served, or that didn't serve here, but it served at the end of World War II. There's a ton of shipwrecks. You're absolutely right. From the, the Carl Bradley in, in Lake Michigan to the Christmas tree ship. Um, there, there's so many opportunities we have to educate the youth, to educate the adults, to educate everybody. As far as Oliver Hazard Perry, the naval hero of the Great Lakes in the War of 1812 perfect example of how to let people know about all of that. All of the naval battles of the War of 1812 fought on the Great Lakes. These are the type of things we definitely want to explore. We definitely want to get that out there. You have the history of the United States Marine Corps, the history of the Navy, the history, like you said, anything Great Lakes that we can definitely do. This is part of the thing where, where, where Captain Bybee said we can bring in guest speakers. We can have rotating displays. I've already been working with um, one of uh, a graduate student at UWM who's a historical preservation major. And she has began drawing up preliminary forms for how that we can rotate with other ships, how we can develop our own programs for this area and for this region. So there, there's definitely a lot of history that we want to convey with this ship. It's just it's a convenient way for us to do it on board a United States naval ship. And I have a question uh, for you. What is wrong with showcasing a ship that helped protect our Navy during the Cold War? Nothing That's at all. Right. It's just that there's what significance does it have to the city itself if you're just going to showcase a Navy ship here? I mean, there's got to be some significance to this city. There's nothing, <clears throat> I mean, other than the fact it's a, it's, a, it's a United States Navy vessel that has gone around the world. It didn't serve in the Great Lakes. It served off the coast of Vietnam or Korea or the North Atlantic or wherever you said. But if you're going to do a project such as this, there should be some type of a tie into our local shipbuilding history, the local shipwrecks of this area, the local battles that may have been fought out there, maybe even some of the canoe battles between the white men and the Indian when the city first came into being. And also that this area was used as an anti-aircraft training range in World War II. One of the misconceptions is that these naval ships have to have historical relevance to the city that they're being proposed in. If you go to the USS Kids website, one of the frequently asked questions is, what is the tie with Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and the USS Kidd? The first sentence says, absolutely nothing. So, there, I mean, I love your ideas. I think they are outstanding and definitely something that we want to do and that we had planned to do. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Montemarro? Thank you, Chairman Ver Van der Weyl. Um, the chicken or the egg, right. Um, with this contingency lease agreement, and they're doing the park, if you would, you would do the parking study, the feasibility, and so forth and so on, then who decides the viability of all those? The Navy that owns the ship, Windsor, who's going to run it, or Sheboygan, whose place it will be birthed? Yes. All three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretty so much, yeah. We all have to sit down and look at all and of agree. that. And agree. Probably not the Navy as much as the city, and, may, and probably definitely state agencies when you get to DNR and national agencies with EPA as so far as could, environmental. After going through all of it, we as a city could still say, okay, no thank you. And that or is, does that at least tie us to? If you can say that with justification and good reason. Well, I would just like to make sure we get that answer. This lease, at any time, can we back out which, as long as there's some justification or are we like tied to it? Is, is what she was asking. I would guess I would like a more clear answer. Well, I, I, you'd probably have to talk to the lawyers about that. But it's my understanding that uh, this contingent lease will uh, stay in effect until 
there it, we've come across uh, some aspect of it that uh, we cannot meet. So you know, if you say, uh, uh, I don't know, say there's a, a, a parking problem, we'd have to investigate uh, what can be done to resolve the parking problem. And if there's absolutely nothing that can be done to resolve it, uh, in that case, actually, the, the Navy's got first cut on this because in our application to them, we have to answer a lot of these things and before they'll approve it. So uh, uh, I, I guess what I'm saying is if you, the, the city can't just say, oh, we changed our mind and back out. It has to be with justification uh, and you know, in good cause. All right, thank you. And I'm sure before we uh, vote on that part, we'll be talking to our city attorney. Right, and, and he uh, uh, was instrumental in drafting this agreement. All right, thank you. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just have a couple questions. Um, there's another city that wants this ship. Correct. What happens if after going through all of this, you get the um, lease contingency and you spend all the money on the studies and what happens if Michigan gets this ship? And the other question is, what is the liability to the city for having this ship in our, our harbor? Uh, the city has no liability. Uh, what happens if uh, uh, not only uh, uh, that city, but three other cities could put in applications also? Like I said, the uh, Navy will study all successful applications that are in uh, six months after the initial application is approved, and they will decide which one uh, they want the ship to go to. Uh, if it goes to a city other than Sheboygan, we shut down or we look for another ship. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Recchi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, reading some of your information here that was collected throughout the time. You have some political endorsements, one from the governor, one from uh, Representative Mark Green of Congress, another one from uh, Congressman Paul Ryan, but I don't see anything from our local representatives. Why? Actually, I think Bob Alderman Ryan's in a better position to answer this than I can right now. All right, Alderman Ryan. That's, that's one of the questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, do have a, a verbal endorsement of this project, a verbal approval from uh, Senator Joe Leibum. Uh, at this point, uh, Captain Caswell was in contact with Senator Leibum, and unfortunately, they were supposed to meet the next day, and he decided to fly off the roof. So uh, that uh, we do have a verbal uh, um, uh, uh, approval from or verbal uh, endorsement from Senator Leibum on this project. Uh, also, as long as we're speaking of uh, endorsements, um, uh, the uh, Highlander 2, which they're spending several million dollars to build a new restaurant on the uh, by the A Street Bridge, they have also uh, given us a verbal endorsement, and Captain Caswell was also getting up with them. Um, he has been in contact with uh, Representative Van Akron, from what I understand, also. So there will be uh, uh, local political endorsements of this. All right. Alderman Rackett, did you have more questions? Yes, I did. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, other question is, you said no cost to the city whatsoever? No cost to the taxpayers? No, we are not asking for any direct money from the city. Now, Indirect money, it depends upon what you're talking about. Uh, are you talking, uh, as far as the parking, we're going to pay a parking assessment to cover parking. Uh, we're going to pay our water bills. Uh, we're going to pay our own insurance. Uh, did you have anything specific in mind? Well, how much, how much of this is going to be funded by, say, the state or the federal government? We do not know now. Uh, we will be approaching uh, the uh, state and the federal government for some funds. Uh, we have talked to the State Department of Tourism, 
and they will be very happy to give us some support after the ship is here uh, for advertising. For advertising. Uh, the, they gave us some leads to uh, some other state uh, uh, agencies, agencies uh, that may give us some help. But again, we have not submitted any uh, grant proposals or anything like that because it's premature to do that without a place to, to put the ship. We do intend asking the federal government for some help through some grants. Uh, whether we get those or not, I don't know. We're going to have to look at all of our possible funding, funding sources and, and go after money. We do not intend to ask the city of Sheboygan for any money. And like we said before, if the project fails, we will have had money set aside to get the ship out of here. My next question is then, how many years is it generally between dry docks on, on a vessel like this? Uh, in fresh water, about 50 years. 50 years, okay. So um, what happens if you have to pull this thing out early and you run into situations like they run into New York City with the Intrepid? With the currents, the way they run along that seawall down there at the uh, South Pier, chances are you're going to have that thing filling in with sand. Now, it's going to be much more expensive here to pull something like that out because we don't have direct access to tugboats just that quickly to pull something like that out. I mean, we're in a situation here where probably the closest tugs are Chicago or Milwaukee to even take a look at something like that or possibly Sturgeon Bay. Um, what type of money would you have set aside to cover such an expense to get the boat out of there and bring it back and we, that we would not lose it in, you know, because this could possibly break. I mean, right now, the United States Navy, last I saw, was about $3 million they kicked in in New York City. Now, the taxpayers are kicking in for this thing again. We're not saying that we won't take any tax dollars. We're saying we will not take any tax dollars from the city of Sheboygan. Uh, and My problem so is to move a ship out of here, there's no reason to move it out in any kind of emergency. There's, there's time to get tugs here. Uh, and with this configuration, if the ship needs to go into dry dock, there's a possibility of, of uh, instead of towing the ship out, uh, building a caisson along that open end of the pier and uh, doing any maintenance uh, right on site. It's a possibility. So we've got, we've been working with a, uh, a uh, consultant, a naval consultant, who has been responsible for placing uh, an excess of, I think it's 18 uh, historic ships uh, around the country. And he sees no problems in putting that ship here. Uh, he's very experienced in this. Uh, the Navy Department uh, has a lot of trust in this guy. He's never let them down. He is uh, extremely conservative in his uh, uh, projections and, and his recommendations. Uh, you know, I'm not the technical guy, but he sees no problem in, in doing this. With a bigger ship, we would maybe have to tow it uh, through to the east coast, but this ship can easily be handled uh, in our Great Lakes uh, uh, facilities. And just to touch on an earlier point about the weather being an issue, one of the plans, the mooring plan, has to be designed to withstand a 100-year storm. Uh, and that is what the Navy deems as the worst possible storm that can happen. I'm not talking about getting this thing out in an emergency. I'm talking about with the sediment and everything else filling in as the rivers filled in over the years. Mm -hmm. In the event that you're trying to get this thing out of here, now you're responsible for paying for this to get it out for dry dock or whatever Correct. maintenance or repairs it may need. Mm -hmm. You're saying 50 years, but that's not the guarantee that 20 years from now it may, not need, to, it may need to go to Sturgeon Bay for repairs or some, sure. of some type. Now we have a problem with the sediment and everything coming into the, into the, uh, into the river, and you can't get this thing out. It's going to break you. I mean, what guarantees do we have that you're going to have enough money to pull this thing out and put it back in 
if the same situation occurs here that has occurred in New York City, because as time goes on, we know it's going to fill in with sand and, and mm -hmm. sediment and mud. It's just going to get stuck in there. Why does it have to get pulled out? What I'm saying is if you have to pull this out for dry dock like they're doing well, in New no, York right now, I mean, what type of guarantee are we going to have that you're going to have the funds to do this without breaking your whole project? Just to give you an example, the USS Alabama currently had to have her hull work done. She is more than mud. They did not pull her off of there. They built a dry dock around her and just let the water out and worked on the ship right there. So there's probably, there might not be any need to pull the ship out if there needs to be any work done on it. Uh, I, I should also say that uh, these funds that we have set aside uh, to take the, or give the ship back to the Navy, uh, the exact <laughs> amount of those will be determined by the Navy in conjunction uh, with our um, uh, uh, consultant. So uh, that is something that they would have to take into account when they decided what the size of these funds were. Or it can be something that, as any of you have probably seen for, for local schools, colleges, anytime they want to do a major upgrade, they have a capital campaign. So we just have a campaign that starts, once again, not centered in Sheboygan, but all over the nation. So it, it's something that you see on a constant basis that if something that big needs to be done, We'll just set up a capital campaign to, to raise money for it. My concern is if something happens that you need to pull it up for for dry dock of some type, that the costs, like I see they're incurring the, in New York City, that could break your project. And that's my concern here, because if the project is broke, then we've got ourselves a, a big hole down in the harbor sure. we'd have to fill in. And, and, you're, and you're absolutely right. That's a legitimate concern. However, I would remind everybody on the council here that the USS Intrepid is almost a thousand foot long ship. That is an aircraft carrier that has a lot more of a draft than the USS Edson does. So you have to scale everything back that it's not going to be a $50 million capital campaign like the Intrepid is running right now. That is why she's going to be shut down for a number of years is to be able to make those renovations. With a smaller ship that's in better shape, the Intrepid also was a World War II veteran. So she has seen probably 15 to 20 more years than the Edson has. So there's a number of factors. I mean, you know, the, the what if, I understand that and you're absolutely right, but then you know, there's a lot of factors that go into where the Edson isn't going to be as costly or time-consuming as that venture will be. One of the, one of the problems uh, with uh, the Intrepid is uh, it was the propellers on the ship that were uh, causing the biggest problem, being buried deepest in the sand. Uh, on the uh, ship we're going to be bringing in, we're going to have the propellers taken off, as well as the sonar dome to reduce the draft of it. Uh, no, I don't think they're going to touch the rudders. But if they had to, they could. I think they need the rudders on. All right, moving on, Alderman Montemarra. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman Verhasselt. I promise this is my last question. <laughs> when, when you talk about um, 2008, that best time, 2008, was that the length of the contingency lease, or was was that the time when you thought it might happen? You know, it was. It's Are you half asking an hour if, ago. If in 2008 if that's when we thought the contingency lease would be passed? No. Uh, oh, I was going to say I hope not. Uh, viable <laughs> until the 2008, or was 2008 the date you was the earliest date that it would be available for tourists? Yes. Yes. Okay, but the contingency lease would be from now until then. Do we have an end date for that? I think the lease. If you look at the lease, it's written for 25, 25 years. 25 years. 25 years. Correct. So that part of of the pier would be kind of uh, spoken for for the next 25. Right, years. correct. Thank you very much. It's all and, and there are procedures for ending that lease early if both sides uh, concur. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, it's obvious that you gentlemen have done a lot of homework even uh, without uh, Captain Caswell here today. Um, well, I think, you know, this is, is a council here. We can look, either be the devil's advocate, and, uh, which we, you know, we are to, to make sure that everything is in line. Um, uh, you know, I, I think we're to the point that, you know, we should not be grasping for straws to try to find, you know, perceived problems that, uh, you know, may appear if the uh, Martians come out of space or something of the sort and attack our ship. Um, you know, this ship is not the USS Intrepid. 
you know, this is a, you know, it's thir it has a 13 foot draft on it. Um, you know, to, to compare it to trying to drag a, a, a ship with a 30 to 40 foot draft out of the mud uh, is, is, is not fair to say the least. Um, you know, this, this, is, uh, this is a, you know, this is a great plan for our city that you guys are putting together. It really is. I mean, I think it's, uh, it's something that, uh, I think we as a, as a city, we need to do our homework. We need to give this our due diligence. Um, but I think we should feel, uh, we should feel honored that uh, this could become a part of, uh, a part of our Sheboygan well, Thank Heritage you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Uh, I have a few questions. Would you be open to, um, I'm going back to the water taxi idea, would you be open to having that the only access to the battleship, that, that the water, that there wouldn't be, you'd have a parking offsite and then the water taxis would take you to the battleship? I think the, one of the major problems with that would be that <clears throat> the water taxi charges and we don't want to charge people to get to the ship to charge them to get on the ship. Does that make sense? Because I think he charges, what, $4? Is it possible to do it on a different way, like maybe have your own boats taking them to it, not, not a water taxi as much as a shuttle that you would provide? Yeah, I think there's other reasons that would be impractical. Uh, uh, one of them uh, being uh, fog, uh, bad weather in the harbor. Uh, uh, as it stands now, we intend to run the ship uh, year-round, that may change. Uh, we may, in the uh, uh, winter months, we may be open only on weekends, or we may find we have to close on weekends, but that's, that's up in the air. But uh, there are certainly going to be times when uh, it would be impractical uh, to have the water taxi be the only access to the ship. Uh, there are a lot of times when parking isn't a problem down here. Uh, we, when we were figuring on our 80,000 uh, uh, customers, we figured we'd probably need a maximum of about 50 spaces on a summer weekend. People aren't going to park and be there all day long. We figured uh, probably uh, maximum stay aboard the ship would be about a two-hour stay. So there's going to be turnover. Uh, we figured uh, some people will be coming by bus. Uh, the uh, school kids that may come to visit will be coming on a bus. They're figured in our 80,000 people. Uh, some of the tour groups that groups will be coming by bus. We figured an uh, average of about three uh, passengers uh, per car. And so, you know, 50 spaces. When you look at the length of that drive, and if we provide, um, if we provide a uh, shuttle service, you know, that's not a lot of spaces. Uh, so, but like I say, the parking study will We'll uh, address that, and we'll uh, work out what has to be worked out for parking. All right. And uh, for the because we're on TV and people are watching at home, could you explain a little bit more about the museum, where it's going to be, and so that everybody's on the same page with that? Certainly. Uh, the museum will be self-contained on the vessel. There will be no building on, on land. Um, so what I will do is show you a slide here. This gives you an idea of all of the compartments in this vessel. Each of these compartments can be a different museum space. So you can see there's quite a few of them. Now, obviously, there's a few that we can't. The uptake space by the smokestacks, we can't use that as a, as a museum space. But all of these spaces, you'll see on here, it's kind of probably too small for you to really see, but there's crew living spaces. Those are already done as museum spaces. The, um, the chief petty officer's mess is already done as a, as a museum space. The barber shop is done. So each of these compartments is going to be a different piece of the museum. So that's why, and, and this is very similar to the USS North Carolina. She is a battleship in Wilmington, North Carolina, does not have a building associated with the ship. The museum is the ship. Just the same type of program we want to do right here. All right, thank you. 
And, and I would like to thank you for coming tonight to let the uh, citizens see your presentation and, and get the information out there. It's, it was a great presentation. Thank you very much. It was uh, very nice being here. And thank you for all your questions. They were very good. We enjoy getting uh, peppered with questions like that. So, but thank you very much. Is there any other discussion from Alderman? So I'd like to thank you also. And uh, if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to contact uh, one of us. And we'll try to, if we don't have the answer uh, uh, right offhand, we'll uh, get an answer for you. All right, thank you. Uh, there will be some public forum and some communications we're going through, so stick around. <laughs> uh, moving on in the agenda. We have RO number 3740607 by city clerk to make a communication from John Mosel, World War II Navy veteran, stating that the Common Council should do the right thing and bring the USS Edison to Sheboygan. Is there a motion on that? There's been a motion to accept and file. Is Mr. Mosel here tonight? He is not, so uh, is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Triple votes aye, motion passes. Next on, on the agenda is communication number 70607, submitting a communication from Robert Darling and stating his concerns with bringing the USS Edison to Sheboygan. Cut. Motion a second to accept and file. Under discuss, discussion is uh, Mr. Darling here tonight. Would you like to speak on your communication to the alderman tonight? If you could come up to the podium, please. Can we turn the lights on, please? Thank you. Right. Go ahead. Thank you. I had communicated with... Uh... Sir, if you could maybe oh. adjust a little bit so you got the mic. You can, you can move the podium if you'd like. Thank you. I had uh, heard uh, Alderman Vanderbilt on uh, WHBL several weeks ago. I'm sorry. I had heard Alderman Vanderbilt several weeks ago on WHBL and <clears throat> communicated to him some of my concerns uh, regarding that. I realize that this is an emotional issue. A lot of people have uh, put a tremendous amount of work into considering this. Uh, I'm not unsympathetic to that. My father served as an officer on the USS Colahan for the three years of the uh, uh, Korean conflict. Um, he's also contributed to a book on Fletcher-class destroyers. Um, he and I have had a number of discussions you know, regarding bringing the Edson to Sheboygan. Uh, although uh, it may be a proud source of uh, naval history, uh, the Forrest Sherman class and the converted Forrest Sherman class of vessels, which the uh, USS Edson is one of them, uh, only three have been reserved as uh, museum pieces. Uh, five were sold for scrap and nine were sunk for target practice. So the, they may not have as high regard within the Navy as they do and some causes to bring it as a museum. I, I did not believe, um, while some speak of a proud naval history of Sheboygan, uh, ours is at best tangential. Uh, cities like Portsmouth, New Hampshire, Philadelphia, um, you know, San Diego, Hampton Roads, you know, they have a naval history. Uh, we had a small vessel here shortly after World War II. Certainly, citizens of Sheboygan have served, you know, in the armed forces, you know, in the Navy, but they have in every other city in the nation. Uh, I guess my principal concern is as a taxpayer, the phrase, uh, at little or no cost to the city, makes me very nervous. Um, my great concern is that there's a tremendous amount in, of money involved in bringing this vessel uh, to Sheboygan, money that has to be raised. And if we commit to a lease or say that we're involved, at what point does it happen that well, we've spent this much money and we're almost there and can you help us out? And that is, is my great concern because um, there are very few things that are free. When they talk about 
well, there's going to be no cost. Well, dredging the Sheboygan River is going to cost somebody something. You know, whether it's the Army Corps of Engineers, all of us pay taxes and that money goes towards, you know, paying for that project. Um, although Alderman Ryan had talked about the draft of the uh, being 13 feet, the website says the draft of the ship is 22 feet. Um, when I kayak on the river on a regular basis, uh, I can stick my paddle and touch the bottom of the harbor, uh, you know, on the south pier. So, you know, 22 feet is a lot to be removed, and it's going to cost a lot in order to be able to do that. With the federal government, you know, trying to close all of the um, spending you know, items that need to be done, you know, the Sheboygan may not be on their high list of priorities. Uh, I'm concerned that verbal endorsements don't pay the bill. Um, you know, it's very good of Governor Doyle to say he thinks it's a good idea, or Mark Green, you know, or, or the Pope or anyone else, but, you know, unless a lot of money comes with that, you know, it, it's just not going to happen. So thank you for your time. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any, any other discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Next on the agenda is RO number 3040607. Submitting a communication from Tina Weisgerber, general manager, owner of the Seabird Restaurant at the Blue Harbor Resort, stating her concerns with bringing the USS Edson to Sheboygan. Could I have a motion on that? Motion is second to accept and file. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Next on the agenda is the RO by Sheboygan Transit. Uh, submitting a communication from the same communication we just filed. Is there uh, any discussion? Could we have a motion? Motion is second to accept and file. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Next we have a communication from Richard Caswell of the Wisconsin Naval Ship Association addressing the concerns of Tina Weisgerber, owner of the Seabird Restaurant, regarding the birthing of the USS Edson. Can we have a motion on that? Motion to accept and file. Motion and a second to accept and file. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Next we have um, RC number 2530607 from the Director of Planning and Development submitted an agreement between the City of Sheboygan and Wisconsin Naval Ship Association for birthing of the USS Edson in the Sheboygan Harbor, recommends that the report of officer be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Motion is in a second to accept and file. All in any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? No. Motion passes. Next is RO number 2890607, submitting an agreement between the City of Sheboygan and Wisconsin Naval Ship Association for birthing of the USS Edson in the Sheboygan Harbor. This would be the actual agreement we're voting on, I believe. Or, unless I'm wrong. That was a previous one? Alderman Gordon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are we on 1363 now? Voids this. <clears throat> We're on item number 11, which would be 1363. Oh, I'm sorry, run item number 10, which is 1363. Okay, I would like to make a motion uh, to make an amendment on the uh, document on page 3 of the agreement uh, under number 2 after the first paragraph. I'd like to make the following amendment. Uh, WINSA agrees to make voluntary payments to the city annually after the second full year of their operation 
on or before May 1st fees for police and fire protection for the Edson and the Edson project area. The amount of the fees to be determined by the mayor, director of public works, and the city attorney. The amount of the fees will be reviewed annually and adjusted on an annual basis by the mayor, uh, director of public works, and the city attorney. If I could I go on to explain the reason for the, uh, there's, been some, there's been some concern about whether truly that there are gonna be no cost to the city. Well, there are gonna be costs to the city because uh, the city is going to have to provide police protection and fire protection down on that, down on that site forever. And so I would like to see with this, with this uh, uh, amendment to the agreement that a plan be put in place before the final agreement that the uh, uh, WINSA people agree to pay this voluntary fee for fire and police protection. I've talked to the city attorney this morning about this and perhaps if the council would want more information before they would vote on this amendment or I would get a second on the amendment that maybe the, or after I get the second in discussion, maybe the city attorney could go into the mechanics of this a little bit further. But this is a way to recover the costs that we will be, that we will be uh, absorbing for police protection and fire protection on that site. And I think it's only fair that they make a contribution towards those costs so that there truly is no cost to the city. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a second on that amendment? Second. Um, I will ask Alderman Bourne if after the meeting if you could give us that amendment to enter sure. into the minutes. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I don't <clears throat> personally have a problem with, with that amendment. Um, I, I, one thing I see in it is that, you know, the fees to be determined by the mayor, the director of city development, and the city attorney. Uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if uh, the Windsor people would have a, a problem with this amendment, uh, but I think it does, we need some clarification as far as uh, probably some type of a formula in there as far as what those voluntary fees can be. You know, if, you know, if, if, we, if, we, if we have a, uh, a trio of uh, a mayor, city, de you know, city development person, uh, you know, five years down the road that decides the city could use an extra couple million dollars, I would hate to see, uh, you know, the, the ship get slapped with that if that's the way it reads. So I think that there, you know, this should be a voluntary uh, fee for uh, fire and police services. And I, I personally do not have a problem with that, provided that this fee is not excessive and will not inhibit the, the success of this project. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Montemar. Thank you, Chairman Vanderweel. Um, asking nonprofits to do this is pretty much standard in, in the latest developments that have been going on throughout the city. I think the, um, the planning director always tries to do this with all nonprofits. This isn't anything new or special for them. And I don't, I think it's kind of inappropriate to assume that down the line there'll be th three people that are gonna be mean to the neighbor. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> President Berg. Ah, uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think this is consistent with the overtures made by the Spaceport Sheboygan uh, uh, folks when they came and presented to us. They had talked about uh, uh, wanting to get some experience in terms of their operational costs, but I believe that they were supportive of uh, considering a payment in lieu of taxes for these fees. So this, this tends to be, I think, a certainly a current uh, fee generation topic for many nonprofits that operate in municipalities. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on the amendment? Um, Alderman Manny. Thank you. Uh, I believe it's a good idea. I don't believe we need to pass this tonight as an amendment to the motion that's to us. Uh, it might be appropriate to do more research and come to council with an appropriate amendment that's uh, further thought through and articulated with input from Steve McLean, et cetera. So it's not overwhelmingly germane to the vote that we take. I'd rather have that well thought out and detailed as opposed to pass it now as a part of the, amend uh, part of the resolution, uh, knowing we're gonna have to change it uh, next time we meet anyway. Thank you, City Attorney McLean. Uh, could you step up and give your opinion on that, please? Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I also think, you know, the proposal makes some sense. Uh, the devil's in the details. Uh, and I guess what I would like to see, and, and I don't know, you know, who comes up with the magic number, but I think there should be either a number to begin with or a clearly delineated formula so that everybody knows what we're talking about and it's within the realm of doability for the Winsa group. Uh, uh, you know, the likelihood of coming up with, you know, a million dollars 10 years down the road is probably a, a bit of a stretch, but I, I do think, I guess administratively, it'd be a lot easier to come up with a number to begin with and then have that adjusted on an annual basis uh, at a rate, say, that's comparable to uh, our annual budget increase or something like that, so that there is a, you're starting out with a base that's clear and you've got a formula to modify it instead of coming up with some sort of arbitrary number each year. Uh, the trick is to come up with the original number and how you're gonna calculate that. Uh, I gave this some thought uh, today uh, in, after Alderman Bourne gave me a call. Uh, we, uh, uh, we have talked about this with pilot agreements. We, we originally were going to do something similar with the landmark project um, before they realized that they needed some some major assistance from the city through TIF. Um, and, but there, and I think the way most pilots work, it, it's tied into a payment in lieu of taxes where you you make an equivalency valuation on the facility, and it's. Typically, it's a building on land, and you've got an assessor with some experience as to what land values are and what building values are, and then you make, you know, sort of a comparable analysis. With uh, with a ship in the harbor, um, you know, you're kind of grasping at straws. One one thing I thought of just out of the chute, and you know, what relevance it has to anything, I don't know, but I took the length of the vessel times the width, multiplied it, gives 18,000 some odd square feet. If you, what we do with the South Pier land along the river that we're leasing <coughs> to developers, uh, the assessor came up with at the beginning of the project an estimate of $10 a square foot as the estimated value of the land. So if you do that with this uh, 18,000 square foot, uh, came up to $188,000 value on this piece of, piece of water, I guess, is what you've got attached to the, uh, the pier. Uh, if you take that $188,000 value and then tie the city's tax rate into that at $8.10, I think uh, Rich told me it was uh, for next year, uh, you get a figure a little shy of $2,000 a year. And, and I don't know if that's, you know, if that's what you're looking at or if you're looking at significantly more than that or significantly less, but uh, that, that's one possible scenario to come up with a, a ballpark figure out of the air. Uh, but I, I do think the concept's a good one. Uh, there will be need for you know, uh, hopefully not on a regular basis, but the uh, police protection down there, fire protection, uh, uh, and I think that the city does incur a cost in providing that service. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, I, th I think that's a good point there, Attorney McLean, thank you. Uh, one thing, you know, we, we you know, we would like this process to move along that uh, uh, these gentlemen can start, you know, provided this passes council, uh, you know, get the green light to start their project and try to make it succeed. Uh, so if we can, uh, you know, do this expeditiously that it doesn't hold up uh, for a month or two, the, uh, you know, the, the, the nod to give these gentlemen the contingent lease. Um, I think the, what Attorney McLean threw out here right now is, is would probably be agreed, agreeable to these gentlemen. It sounds fair to me. Thank you. 
Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Racky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would be in favor of sending this to the Finance Committee and let them try and figure this thing out. As far as Alderman Bourne's uh, amendment, they can come up with some numbers there possibly and work it from that end. Well, before we deal with any referrals, we need to vote on the amendment. On the amendment, Alderman Ryan? No. All right. Alderman, or uh, Vice President Serta. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Given the suggestions made by the attorney, Steve McLean, and Alderperson Manny, would Alderperson Boren be interested in retracting his motion? Therefore, we can get it to the council, present that new information at that time, and then possibly make a motion to refer. I guess, I guess I don't have a problem as long as eventually Eventually, this gets into the uh, into the agreement, and 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 it's agreeable to win. So it's a win-win for the for them and for the city. But I do want to see them pay the uh, you know the fees for police and fire protection. If we do the research first and then come back w when the final agreement is uh, approved, I guess that's fine with me. Do you withdraw your? I'll, I'll withdraw it. All right. Go a second. I'll agree with Alderman Bourne. All right, everybody agrees to withdraw. Before we vote, I, I just want to say that I, I think a lot of good things came out tonight and a lot of new information that I felt about the parking came out tonight. And I just, I like that we're problem solving and we're, we're looking at give, giving it a chance at least. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have one more question for the city attorney, if I may. All right. It's on a different matter than we were talking about. But. Attorney McLean, uh, I've read the complete agreement, and uh, I wanted to and I wanted to know if you feel comfortable that if the project would fail after ten years, that the city is going to be held harmless for any cost if the ship leaves. Um, thanks, Alderman Bourne. I, I believe it would be. One thing I did uh, note that I, I think could be strengthened in the agreement to, uh, to address that concern. It's uh, where I, I feel it's somewhat in here in that uh, one of the contingencies is that uh, once they get approval by the Navy Department of uh, Ship Donations, for uh, for uh, of their application, which is going to require some escrowed money or a bond or something like that, uh, I think it would be beneficial to add a provision, something to the effect that, that Winsa would provide evidence sufficient to the city uh, that those funds are indeed. Uh, Sufficient funds are escrowed to cover the costs of removing the Edson from the Sheboygan Harbor at no cost to the city, county, state, or federal government. Uh, right now, it's kind of, it, it's not specifically in there. And I, I think, uh, I, I did look at some of the Winsa literature. Uh, I don't think that they've, they would have a problem with that. They've got to do that with the feds. This would assure us that indeed that money is in place. And right now, we don't really have that specific assurance. Uh, other than that, I, uh, you know, a as, uh, you know, a as well as can be uh, protected, I, I think the city would be assured that there would be monies set aside then in the event that for whatever reason, um, the lease was terminated or the project didn't work out, the Navy wanted the vessel back, that uh, we would be held harmless as far as the costs of removing it. Well, I was just going to follow up that uh, as, long as, as long as we're going to be working on this thing that we talked about before that I brought up, if Attorney McLean would want to clean up that language that he's talking about and perhaps bring that back in the final agreement, it, it probably would be a good idea too as long as we're working on one thing. We might as well tie up all the loose ends if there are any. Thank you. 
All right, sounds uh, good. Uh, um, go, go ahead. Thank you. Just one comment. There was reference to uh, the duration of the lease as 25 years, and that is correct. The, the tie-in there is that this is really uh, the, the bulk of this lease is a sublease uh, from us to WINSA of the lease that we entered into with the Corps of Engineers. And that's a 25-year lease. So we can't, we can't give a 50-year lease when all we've got is 25. So uh, other than the section dealing with the contingencies, uh, all of the, if you will, boilerplate provisions in this agreement uh, mirror the provisions that are in the lease between the city and the Corps of Engineers for use of the South Pier right now. Uh, and a lot of the provisions are such that we have to agree and also the, the district engineer for the Corps of Engineers has to agree to various things and has to uh, be satisfied. So um, that's the reason for the 25 years and uh, that's really the, uh, the essence of the bulk of the, the terms in the, uh, the lease. Thank you. Uh, President Berg? Uh, yes, with that in mind, I would move to accept and adopt the report of officer. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any discussion on that motion? Alderman Montemar? Okay, we're going to repeat we're going to approve or disapprove the report of officer, which is just a report. Thank you. All right, so the motion was to accept and adopt, and adopt the report of officer. Any other discussion? On the Montemar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman Vanderweel. We're simply adopting or accepting, accepting the report of officer. That's it. This is not yay or nay to the agreement. Or is it? Uh, the, the report of officer is submitting an agreement between the city of Sheboygan and Wisconsin Naval Ship Association. Right. City Attorney McLean, do you have anything? Any comments on that? Well, I would just say what you want to, I'm assuming this is some recommendation by this committee to the council as far as what you want to do with that lease. Uh, I don't know that it's just accepting the report of officer. I think at some point we want to give some indication to the council what the position is of the committee to hold on the lease. I think this is probably the so, so what we'll be doing is giving the council our recommendation of yes, we want to do it or no, we Thank don't. Thank you. Alderman Ryan? That was what I was going to suggest, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? Aye. No. Do we need a roll call? All right, we got it. Moving down to item, Alderman Bourne. I would, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like, I would like a roll call vote, please. All right, thank you. Okay, those in favor of um, accepting the report of officer, Bourne? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Groff? Ex Hannah? Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Excuse. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Excuse. <coughs> Motion passes. Next on the agenda is item number 11, resolution number 1790607 by Alderperson Racky and Vanderweel. It is a resolution terminating the city's consideration of the proposal to locate the USS Edson in the Sheboygan Harbor. Do I have a motion? Moved to file. Motion, motion and a second to file. Under discussion, uh, my name is on this resolution, but because of the discussion tonight and the uh, discussion of the amendments, that is why I have changed my mind on that. 
All in favor to accept and file the resolution signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? Aye. aye. We'll do a roll call right away. Boren? Uh, we're boarding the file in the document. Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Mayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Ryan? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Okay. Motion passes? Motion passes. Thank you, Vice President Serta. Next, we have public forum regarding the USS Edison from all taxpayers and res residents of the governmental unit. We're going to limit it three minutes per person. And if you would like to speak, we would ask that you give your name, city, and address. Go ahead. If you could come to the mic for the people at home. in the Navy, one in the Army. Um, my son is stationed aboard the USS Louisiana nuclear-powered submarine. He is MM1 and a lead petty officer on that submarine. Um, uh, he is stationed in Birmingham, Washington. And at the time we went down there last year, we got to tour the sister ship of the USS Edson, and that's the USS Turner Joy. And they had a little museum in there, and they also had a little gift shop. And that was the most beautiful ship I ever saw. When you walked down there by the riverfront, it was down there by the riverfront, by the port, whatever. And then the parking was way up above, so it was someplace we probably had to walk maybe a half a mile to get to the ship. But then you walked around the river edge, etc. And when you came into that area and you saw this ship, it was just like the, me, the tears were brought to my eyes. It was just the true, true meaning of being patriotic and what the Navy stood for. And I, above all, especially, and with my husband, would truly love to see the USS Edson birthed in the Sheboygan Harbor. And I hope all of you um, look at that with a sincere thoughts and how Sheboygan should be honored with this. And I thank you for that. Thank you. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Jeff Shuko, and I reside at 2303 South 17th Street. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say if any fees are assessed to this project, I would like the council to take, in, take into consideration that this is a tour, tourism project which has, which has potential to bring uh, uh, a significant amount of money into our economy here. Uh, what I came to talk, uh, discuss today is about a little research that I've done myself on a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers website. When I learned of uh, our, our pier repair being set back, I looked on their site and found that uh, an article here, Baghdad Counts on Local Improvements, uh, I and I've heard just about every excuse in the, under the sun not to bring this project here, by the way. But in looking into this, I found that uh, their priorities clearly do not reflect their own goals and public service commitment on their website. Example, goals to provide strong protection of the nation's aquatic environment, including wetlands. I assume they're referring to our, goal, our nation. Public service commitment listed there accounts, uh, lists a number of things including timeliness and accountability, which I have a question regarding, when what's at issue is $500 million expenditures on 150 projects, not to build, but to upgrade essential services in Baghdad. Uh, to me, this is clearly uh, not addressing or uh, proper use of their priorities and their own goals. 
I feel this response is unacceptable, being pushed back like this, and I would expect every council member to contact our federal representatives to request that the corps provides uh, their priorities be adjusted to provide immediate action here. Because of the time-sensitive nature of the Edson project and huge public and private investments in our lakefront, we have the tax-paying citizens expect to be put on the top of the Army Corps of Engineering's priorities list. Only action of this nature will maintain the public's trust, not only with the U.S. Corps of Engineers, but also our local representatives here. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Go ahead, sir. Good evening. My name is Randy Lutz, address 915 Wilson Avenue, Sheboygan. Uh, we were in contact uh, with Windsor. They contacted us a number of months ago at the start of this project uh, about our co-use of the South Harbor. Uh, forgot to mention, I'm co-director along with my wife, Carol, of Rockets for Schools. Uh, they contacted us. We've had a number of meetings and uh, throughout this process, they've been really concerned and interested in learning about a program, see how they can work with us, develop some synergy uh, between our two programs. Uh, like they mentioned, we are working on a, a memorandum of understanding, and in that memorandum, uh, a couple of things were brought forward as proposals that may help our Rockets for Schools program. Obviously, the uh, modernization of the South Pier is going to be a great help for us. Uh, it is a little bit of a concern taking all the kids out on the South Pier with some of the uh, uh, uneven surfaces out, uh, you know, with rockets and out there. Uh, we're even looking at possibly building up some launch areas uh, along the South Pier, being able to get some SUVs out there with turnarounds to help us get equipment out, to help us get rockets out. Uh, possibly some electrical facilities from some of our equipment and our launch stations. Uh, increased safety through possibly some guardrails. Uh, and some of the real interesting things is the possibility they mentioned a little bit earlier about overnight lodging for some of our students. Possibility of having some additional classrooms or meeting rooms that we could have some presentations for the students. So there really does to be some synergy between the museum and our program. Uh, probably the main concern for Rockets for Schools is the impact that the USS Edson will have on our launch operations off the pier. Uh, we have identified really one main issue, and, and that is our launch operations are governed by, governed by uh, NFPA 1127, and they have some pretty strict rules on distances between the launch pads and any occupied buildings. My reading of the standard defines the Edson as an occupied building. Um, we would have to have that building evacuated during our launch activities. We discussed this with Winza. They seem open to working up some kind of a working rela relationship on the days we launch to be able to accomplish that. We need 1,500 feet. Obviously, that pier isn't long enough to try to get out another 1,500 feet. So it almost pretty much comes down to that we'd have to evacuate the building. I don't think it's of a concern of them that our rockets are going to dam damage their ship. Uh, <laughs> these are cardboard rockets. It's more the concern people entering the ship, leaving the ship Sir? like that, being close to the areas Sir, for launching. You're, you're three minutes is OK. Up. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak? Go ahead. Good evening. I'm Rich Jordan. I'm at 1616 Wallet in Sheboygan. Chairman Van Der Weel and the committee members. I just want to say that I think that you've done the right thing tonight to start this going forward. You've got an agreement, and I have read it all. It's a, it's a forward-looking and it's a protective agreement. 
And I understand as a citizen of Sheboygan that we need protections against these future expenses. And uh, Alderman Radke and, and uh, Alderman Bourne's concerns as presented in the amendment here, which will eventually go forward to considerations for protecting the city from cost of the project are, are well taken. But I, I think that one of the things that we need to look at as an advantage of this is in our concern for bringing tourism in here, because I went to the Wisconsin.gov website to look for tourism in Sheboygan. And Sheboygan is essentially an invisible city when it comes to tourism right now, regardless of what we think we've got. Just to give you an example, um, there were 1,600, almost 1,700 projects in the state of Wisconsin. I sorted them by city so I could find Sheboygan. It goes here out of 1,700 projects. Sockville, 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 Sharon, Shorewood. Sheboygan's supposed to be in there, and it isn't. I went to uh, the sections of the state, northeast, northwest, southeast. We should be in southeast here. The only thing in Sheboygan County listed Kohler and Elkhart Lake. When I finally found something on Sheboygan, let me read you the best thing they had to say about us. Sheboygan, in places to go in Wisconsin. It says, Sheboygan is a great jumping off point for visits to the nearby village of Kohler. <laughs> if you want these documents, I've got them for you. So we've got to start something here. I think that this project is going to be a good one. This isn't going to be the only anchor for tourism here. But we've got to start thinking about some things to bring in here. I think Winsa is bringing something that will be of value to us. Please don't let us look this gift horse in the mouth. We've got the lease still to protect us. But let's move that lease on and let them start answering the questions. They're not few and they're not easy. But let's get started on that for the city of Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak? Ma'am? Hi, I'm Laura Spallinger. I live at 7108 Broadway Avenue in Sheboygan. Could you pull the mic down a little bit? Thank you. OK, better. That sounds good. And I'm a US Coast Guard artist, and I'm a member of the American Society of Marine Artists. So in my eyes, there is nothing more beautiful than a glorious decked out ship, which is, to me, a work of art. I drove semi for like 14 years, and I've been all over the country visiting various museum ships on the road, and I've always had a great time when I stopped to see them. So she's a Navy ship, and she's part of our history, which in these times shows what our national defense is all about. And she did do the three tours in Vietnam and physically took a hit. And we do have a uh, huge Hmong community and population in Wisconsin, and particularly Sheboygan, that we have graciously accepted f for their services rendered in this war. And this ship, Edson, she took this hit defending our integrity. And I'm sure there wouldn't be any problem of obtaining volunteers for upkeep and maintenance of the ship from this Hmong population. And I've spoken with the local reps and veterans, and they're all in favor. I'm working on an endorsement letters and stuff from them. And uh, these local American veterans that have served the border and the Edson Association is, is awaiting the final location for their reunion. I've been emailing them. And we are a port city. This town was built uh, because of it, and a floating national historic landmark would continue to enhance this fact. So I'd ask you to please review your options for keeping tourism afloat here. Don't let it go to the breakers, it, which may happen if Saginaw or Sheboygan can't take her. And the Navy does prefer Sheboygan as her location. No question of why needed there. I mean, Saginaw also had a hit song, but that's about it. So <laughs> I think the Edson is worth a home, and I think she would be considered the queen of the harbor. And she will be the one to put us on the map. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Or I'm sorry, is there any other citizens that would like to speak? Hearing none, we have one last item on the agenda, and that is adjournment. Motion and second to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. We're adjourned.